Hi guys and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now in this video we're going to be taking a look at an antenna that I've wanted to try for quite some time now. Now this antenna will allow me to work through low earth orbiting satellites and when I say work through them I mean talk through them using my ham radio. Now there are many LEO satellites floating around the globe normally with an altitude of less than 2000 kilometers and some of these satellites allow for SSB communications and some act like FM repeaters. Now these satellites require your radio to transmit on one frequency and then receive on another. Usually different radio bands like the 2 meter at 146 megahertz and then the 70 centimeter band up at around 437 megahertz. However, these LEO satellites could have more than one pass over your location per day with each pass lasting a few seconds right up to around 10 or 11 minutes. Now knowing where these satellites are going to be at any given time is something of a must if you want to have any success in working through these satellites. There are a few computer applications like GPredict which is actually multi-platform and this allows you to create a list of satellites that you want to track. However if you want to track these satellites using an antenna like I'm going to show you in this video then you'll most likely want to use an app on your phone for complete accuracy. Now there is another way, certain handheld radios can be programmed to track these LEO satellites. Not only will they provide a basic plot of their location on the screen, but they'll also change frequency automatically to cater for Doppler shift. Now the Radio Oddity GD168 is an absolute fantastic radio for this particular feature. You simply set a fixed location using your coordinates and then you run the satellite feature. Of course the satellite data does need to be updated within the radio. So you can see my dedicated video on the GD168 for further information on that. Now there are other handheld radios like the Baofeng 1701, which can support the custom firmware OpenGD77, which also has this satellite tracking feature. In fact, having two radios is probably best, and I will explain more about that later. So this antenna is called the Arrow 2. This particular model covers two handbands, specifically tuned for the LEO uplink and downlink frequencies. It's extremely lightweight and very easily assembled, meaning this can be packed away and then set up again anytime you like. No tools are required to build, each of the elements simply screw together through the boom. Now I got this from Moonraker here in the UK and I'll leave a link down in the video description below if you want to purchase one. Now to assemble, you start off by combining the two parts of the boom. Once that's together, you can start to attach the elements. Now I would recommend to start with the 70 centimeter elements. These are the short ones. The longest element goes towards the rear, which is where the hand grip is located. Then just attach the elements going down in size. Now perform the same for the two meter elements, but be aware these are actually quite large. So you might have to do it outside if you're quite constrained in space inside. Now once built, you do not need to perform any tuning as it comes pre-tuned. Of course, you can check the tuning yourself if you have something like a VNA. Now this model has a built-in duplexer, which means I can transmit and receive at the same time if I had a suitable radio that supported full duplex. If you do not have a full duplex radio, you can use two radios as mentioned before. You just connect one to one antenna and the other to the other antenna. Both antennas use BNC sockets. Now the duplexer with this model is actually pre-installed in the handle grip. You can purchase this antenna for a bit cheaper without the duplexer. And this is what it looks like fully built. You simply hold the antenna by that soft grip with one hand and then use your other hand for the radio. Now this also allows you to rotate the antenna to maximize performance, especially if you're working in full duplex mode. That's receiving and transmitting at the same time. Under the grip, which we'll take a look at in a moment, there is a regular camera tripod thread, which means you can save your arms from aching for those long LEO sat passes. You'll also notice there are two coax cables coming from the antenna. One is for the two meter elements and the other is for the 70 centimeter elements. As mentioned before, these go into that duplexer. However, if you're gonna use two radios, you can connect them independently. So my first test with this antenna was on a rather miserable day here in the UK. Now I was using the GD168, which has the satellite tracking feature. The prediction feature on the radio showed that AO27 was about to come into view with a nice and high elevation over my location. So I tried to work through it. 
However, after 10 minutes or so, after the pass had ended, I did not even hear AA27, let alone talk through it. Now, it wasn't until I went back inside and checked online that AO27 appears to be pretty much dead. In fact, I would recommend anyone that's looking to get into LEO satellite work is to take a look at this AMSAT status webpage to see which satellites appear to be active, i.e. heard by other stations around the world. Now, a few weeks later, when the weather was a bit nicer, I saw there was a really high elevation ISS pass coming over my location. Now this time I used an app on my phone called ISS Tracker along with the GD168 radio that I'd used before. The ISS has an FM repeater on board, meaning us hams can use it as it flies overhead. Now although this pass was great and I could hear lots of stations really clearly, there was a couple of issues that I've now learned about. Now it didn't help that there was a special event station literally hogging the satellite and with just a 10 minute pass it was difficult to get in. Now another station did hear me, but did not manage to get my full call sign. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. Alpha Alpha 80 Hotel Hall Victor. Papa Alpha 80 Hotel Hall Victor. Thank you, Chad. Mike Zero, Mike Zero, I believe, Delta Quebec question mark. Yeah, Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey, M0 DQW. Delta Quebec, Mike Zero Delta Quebec, please call. Yeah, Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey, Whiskey. Alpha 80 Hotel Call Victor, Papa Alpha 80 Zero Hotel Call Victor, Special Event Station. Mike 7 Echo Sierra Sierra. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is 2 Echo Zero Hotel, Oscar Quebec. Hotel Golf Victor, Mike 7 Echo Sierra Sierra. 59, India Oscar 92. Golf 1 Kilo Delta Quebec. 851 Foxtrot Whiskey. Papa Delta Sierra Hotel, Japan Mike 59, Juliet Oscar 32, Hotel November, Kudel. Jack Yourself, Victor. Papa Alpha 8 is here, Papa Alpha 80 Hotel Hall Victor, Papa Alpha 80 Hotel Hall Victor. Ok, PA 8 Hotel Hall Victor, PD 0 Hotel Julian Mike, succes veilig. Ja, ok, bedankt, graag tot de volgende keer. Papa Alpha 80 Hotel Hall Victor, QRZ. I have only the call of uh, the locator, Julie Roscoe 53. Please, the call sign go. A negative. Papa Alpha 8 is here. Hotel call Victor. Thank you, sir. Now, I've done this before using a vertical antenna. And the first thing that I noticed was how strong the satellite was as it passed overhead and even off to the horizon. Now, it just goes to show that using a Yagi antenna like this pointed at the satellite is really needed. So what have I learned from this experiment using this Arrow 2 dual band handheld Yagi attempting to work through Leo sats? Well, having either a full duplex radio or two radios will be better. When you're receiving, you can maneuver the antenna for reception, but as soon as you press transmit on your radio, you cannot be 100% sure that you're pointing in the right direction. So having a second radio that's listening to the downlink frequency when you're transmitting will give you that edge and you'll know where to point your antenna as you'll hear yourself coming back from the satellite via the downlink if you're aimed correctly. As mentioned earlier, I do have another radio which can perform automatic Doppler shift. So I think I'll need to make up some brackets to hold both radios at the same time. And I also need to fix this to a tripod so it's easier to use. Now something like this will do, but the ball head on this particular tripod did not give me the range I needed in terms of elevation. So definitely some adjustments or maybe even build something will be required. 
As mentioned earlier, the grip comes off and you can pull out the duplexer. But if you're going to use two radios, then you'll not need the duplexer anyway, as each radio will connect to their own antennas. I might also have to consider rotation, but I'm pretty sure I read somewhere that most of the time the two meter or VHF elements, the longer ones there, need to be vertical anyhow. But I guess with trial and error, I'll find out. Now I'm sure some of you guys have already done this. You may even be well versed with hand tracking like this. So if you have any pointers or tips, then let us know down in the comments below. I would love to get one of those Yaesu rotators which can perform auto tracking of elevation and left and right from a computer. So if you have a spare one, send it my way. It will get good use. Anyhow guys, want to say thanks very much for watching. Thanks to my patrons and YouTube members and obviously everybody that watches my videos. It is really appreciated. Until the next one, take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next video.